Let's talk about the accidents when using power operated watertight doors on ships and vessels. A number of lives have been lost and serious injury caused by the incorrect operation of power operated watertight doors. In order to reduce the risk of injury to personnel passing through watertight doors, some ships have central control units located on the navigating bridge, which have two operating positions, one marked local control and the other marked doors closed. Under normal conditions and potentially hazardous situations, the operating condition is set to local control. The doors closed position is only used in emergencies and for drill or testing periods. When the bridge central control unit is set at local control, any watertight door can be locally opened and locally closed without automatic closure of the door. Since closure of the door requires deliberate action, the risk of a person being trapped is very much reduced. The doors closed mode will also permit doors to be opened locally, but the doors automatically reclose upon release of the local control mechanism. Accidents have occurred when crew members were using the controls provided at the doors to pass through the watertight doors which had been closed from the navigating bridge. Under these circumstances, if the control at the door is released, the door closes automatically with a force sufficient to injure anyone that is caught in its path. It is therefore essential that when using a watertight door which has been closed, irrespective of the mode of closure, that both the local controls, one on each side of the bulkhead, are held in the open position while passing through the door. That can be done by first fully opening the door using the near side control with one hand, reaching through the opening to the control on the far side and using the far side control to keep the door fully open until passage is complete. Of course, some of these details may vary on your ship if you have the watertight doors of a different kind of a maker. This video basically generalizes the watertight doors here. A person when unaccompanied must have both hands free to operate the controls and should never attempt to carry any load through unassisted. Accordingly, supervision should be exercised over any work requiring movement of tools, parts or materials through a door. This will effectively make it a two-man operation, one man to operate the door and another to carry the load. To avoid potentially fatal slips, the accumulation of oil leakage in the vicinity of the watertight doors should not be permitted. Written instructions need to be provided for the ship on the safe operation of the doors and it is essential that all crew members who may use the doors know what type of the control system is fitted, are well trained in the correct operating procedure for the system, fully appreciate the crushing power of the watertight doors and this is where your role as an officer comes into play. You must train your crew so that they are aware of the pitfalls and the operation side of the watertight doors. This crushing power of the door together with expeditious closing is necessary to ensure that watertight doors fulfill their primary purpose of ensuring maximum safety of the ship and its crew. But if accidents to personnel are to be avoided, it is essential that the operating instructions are strictly observed. Permanent notices clearly stating the correct operating procedure must be prominently displayed on both sides of the watertight door. Under health and safety legislation, it is required that on all seagoing vessels fitted with power operated watertight doors, there are procedures for training personnel in their use when joining a vessel. Also, that training is repeated at regular intervals in order to remind personnel of the dangers of these doors. Finally, for passenger ships, attention is drawn to relevant regulations 
records of training to be kept as part of the vessel's safety management system for inspection at a later date and under the ism code ship owners and managers are required to establish safeguard against all identified risks and to investigate and analyze non conformities accidents and hazardous situations then to ensure that training is provided for all personnel concerned documentation of such training is kept in accordance with the ism code they should also take into account guidelines and recommendations by the flag state administrations